Hello everyone, welcome to lecture 6 of Banking Panel Accounts. Today we will be taking up with the questions on balance sheet. In the last lecture we had covered with the questions on profit and loss statement. Today we will take up with the question on balance sheet and in the next lecture we will solve complete final accounts question which will include profit and loss account also and balance sheet also. So two questions will be covering in today's lecture. One is classwork. I will be solving question 8 on the screen and the other is homework question 14 which I will discuss and then answer of the same will be uploaded on you will learn app. So all of you take out question number 8 of your study material. Be attentive. From the following trial balance of tiny bank limited you are required to prepare balance sheet as at 31 3 2019. Now First, let us understand the contents of balance sheet and what short forms we will be marking in the trial balance. So, I have already given you the trick to remember the balance sheet format. Cash reserves deposited with Bank of CBI is a finest option. Cash C stands for capital, so we'll mark simply C for capital. Reserves, reserves will mark it as R, reserves and surplus. Then deposited will mark it as D deposits with bank B stands for borrowing. So borrowings will mark it as B. Then cash reserves deposited with bank of O stands for other liabilities and provisions will mark it as OL. Not only O but OL other liabilities and provisions. Then CBI, C stands for cash and balance with RBI. So all of you mark it as CRBI, cash reserves and balance with RBI. Okay. Then B, CBI, B stands for bank balance and money at call and short notice. So we'll mark it as BM. Okay. Bank balance and money at call and short notice BM. Don't mark B because B stands for borrowings. Then after that, CBI, I stands for investments, so that will mark it simply as I. Then is A, A stands for advances, will simply mark it as A. Finest F stands for fixed assets, will simply mark it as F. And then option O stands for other assets, will simply mark it as OA. After that, below the balance sheet, we show two more things contingent liabilities, C, L, will mark it as CL, and bills for collections, so will mark it as BFC. So these short forms we will be marking in the trial balance, capital, reserves and surplus, deposits, borrowings, other liabilities and provisions, cash balance and reserves and balance with RBI, bank balance and money at call and short notice, investments, advances, fixed assets, other assets, current li uh, contingent liabilities and bills for collection. Let us do the markings. Cash credit will come in advances. Okay, bank gives cash credits and overdrafts. So advances A. Cash in hand, cash and balance with RBI, CRBI. Then cash balance with RBI also, CRBI. Cash balance and balance with RBI. Cash with other banks, bank balance and money at call and short notice BN. Money at call, bank balance and money at call and short notice BN. Gold will come in investments I, government securities investments I, premises fixed assets F, furniture fixed assets F, term loan advances A. Okay, bank gives the term loan so advances A. Share capital will come in capital C. Okay, 19 lakh 80 thousand shares of 10 each would be 1 crore 98 lakhs. But since rupees are given in thousands, you are given only 19,800 as amount. Statutory reserve, reserves in surplus R and put tick on statutory reserve. It will always come in inner column because we have to transfer 25% of current year's profits to statutory reserve. Net profit before appropriation 15,000. Now your PL account is not to be made. So this net profit is directly given to you. 25% of this amount is going to be transferred to statutory reserve. And remaining amount. Okay, remaining amount we will add in profit and loss balance and then both of them after adding remaining amount in PL balance will again come in reserves and surplus. I repeat it one more time. 15,000 is current year's profit. So 15,000 25% they will add in statutory reserve that is transferred to statutory reserve as per 
section 17 of banking regulation act remaining 75 percent amount will add in pnl accounts balance and show it in reserves and surplus that is r any conclusion you can rewind and listen to this once again fixed deposits deposits d savings deposits deposit d current accounts deposit d borrowing from other banks borrowings b bills payable and provisions other liabilities and provisions bills payable and provisions will come in ol other liabilities and provisions now look at the adjustments cash reserve ratio is to be maintained at the rate of 4% by the way currently the crr kept by rbi is 3% but that is minimum <coughs> means all the banks are required to keep minimum 3% crr with rbi but if banks want minimum means they can keep more than 3% also so if they want they can keep 4% 5% 6% 10% also but presently the minimum rate of crr to be kept with rbi is 3% so in your exams 3% can also be given okay but this bank wants to keep a crr of 4% with rbi and statutory liquidity ratio okay crr is 4% to be kept statutory liquidity ratio of 18.75% of demand and time liabilities as a part of compliance by the bank now now we'll make workings related to this so all of you in your notebook give the heading question number 8 and <clears throat> and make the workings for the same now understand what do they exactly mean with this adjustment. Whatever are there, demand and time liabilities. Demand and time liabilities means fixed deposits, saving deposits and current account deposits. These three things, these three things bank accept from public. Now whatever amount bank accepts from public in the form of fixed deposits, saving deposits and current account deposits. 4% of that amount bank has to keep with RBI as cash reserve ratio. So let us first find out this demand and time liabilities. Demand and time liabilities will include three things. Fixed deposits. Okay, working note one we are making. Fixed deposits are 51,700. Then savings deposits. Savings deposits are 45,000 <throat> and current account. Current account is 52,010. So if you do the total of all the three, do it 51,700 plus 45,000 plus 52010 you all will get 148710 what is this 148710 this is demand and time liabilities for the bank these are demand and time liabilities for the bank now here cash reserve ratio is 4% means what are the cash reserves to be kept with RBI cash reserve ratio means what is the cash to be kept with RBI all of you do it 1,48,710 into 4% 5,948.4 now 5,948.4 minimum we have to keep this much means we will keep 5,949 Grounded up to 5949. Okay, this much amount we have to keep with RBI in the form of cash. Now, all of you see in the balance, in the trial balance, what amount of cash is already there with RBI? Only 3788. Okay, what amount of cash is already there with RBI? Only 3788. Now, this is the cash to be kept with RBI. Existing cash with RBI is how much? 3788. 
means out of 5949, we have only 3788 with the bank. So if you subtract that, how much more do we require? 2161. This much more amount is required to be kept with RBI to maintain the legal provision of 4% of CRR. So what will we do with this 2161 if we want to keep with RBI? From cash with other banks, we will subtract this amount and we will add and transfer it to cash with RBI. It means practically what will the tiny bank do over here? Out of this 15,587, they will withdraw 2,161 and they will deposit it with Reserve Bank of India. So that in Reserve Bank of India, they have at least 5,949, which is required as per 4% CRR. Okay, once again, this is the deficit. Okay, this is the deficit which is required to be covered up. So what will the tiny bank do over here? From the bank balance which they have with other banks, 15,587, they will withdraw 2,161 and they will deposit that amount with RBI. So 4% CRR clause will be automatically maintained. So what are we required to do in final accounts? We are required to give two effects of this. You minus this from bank balance with other banks. That means cash with other banks. Okay, you subtract it from cash with other banks. And second effect what you do is you add it in cash with RBI. Practically bank will withdraw from other banks and transfer it to RBI. But theoretically what adjustment we are supposed to do in final accounts, you minus it from cash with other banks. So put tick on cash with other banks so that you remember when we come to this item, we have to minus this amount of 2161. And also put tick on cash with RBI so that you remember that when we come to cash with RBI, we have to add this amount of 2161. Okay, so this is the first part of adjustment, CRR. Now second part is statutory, statutory liquidity ratio. Now what do you mean by statutory liquidity ratio? 4% is very less amount. Means 4% amount to be kept with RBI. So if anyone comes to withdraw a big amount, like that money and call and short put is example I gave you, <clears throat> then you'll have to borrow the money from other banks. So RBI has kept one more condition for all the banks in India that they have to invest certain percentage of deposits in liquid assets means the money should be in investments only so that if anyone comes to withdraw the money you can call that money from other bank at short notice you can sell that investment convert that investment into cash and repay that money to the other bank in a one or two day period of time itself so what is this statutory liquidity ratio 18.75 percent what does this mean total cash and bank balance with other banks and liquid assets of any bank must be 18.75% of this demand and time lag. Let us find out here. Second adjustment or working note we make for statutory liquidity ratio of 18%. Now, demand and time lag it is just now we already obtained as 148710. So this same amount 148710. 18% of that we have to keep in liquid assets. Do it 148710 into 18%. What amount we have to keep in liquid assets? 26,767.8 means approximately 26,768 is what we have to keep in the form of liquid assets. Okay. 148710 into 18.75%. 18.75%, not 18%. Make the correction. 18.75% will come to 27883. Minimum is required, so 27884 is what is required. So whatever deposits the bank has received, out of that, 27,884 must be in cash with them or it must be in the form of liquid assets. 
Now, let us find out what all will be included in liquid assets. So, in liquid assets, we will include, okay, all of you write down the heading liquid assets. In liquid assets, we will include all the items of cash balance and balance with RBI, all the items of bank balance and money at call and short notice, all the items of investments, except except cash with RBI because cash with RBI comes in cash reserve ratio. Statutory liquidity ratio is to be maintained in addition to CR. So whatever is cash balance and balance with RBI, in that we will include only cash balance. Okay, in that we will include only cash balance. We will not include cash with RBI because that is included in CR. So only cash balance. Cash balance plus bank balance and money at call and short notice plus investments will be a part of liquid assets. So let us find out how many liquid assets are there with this tiny bank. Okay, how much is cash balance? All of you can see here cash in hand is 16015. Then how much is bank balance? Means cash with other banks. Now you all can see cash with other banks is 15587 but from that we are going to deposit this 2161 with RBI so we are going to subtract it from cash with other banks. So how much will be left out after that? 15587 is already there but from there we are going to transfer 2161 with RBI. So minus 2161 means how much bank balance will be left out in other banks? We will 15587 minus 2161 in other banks 13,426 will only be left out. Okay, this will be the balance with other banks. Then what is money at call and short notice? Money at call and short notice. Call money, all of you can see here is given as 21012. Okay, 21012. These all are liquid assets. Cash is already in the form of liquid asset with you. Bank balance is a liquid asset with you. Money at call and short notice is a liquid asset with you. It is available in cash. Further investments. So investments means this government securities and gold. So gold is 5523. Government securities are 11017. These two things are marked as investments. Gold 5523. <clears throat> and government securities government securities are 11017 these all are liquid assets with the bank so let us do the total of liquid assets with the bank 16015 plus 13426 plus 21012 plus 5523 plus 11017. The total liquid assets with the bank are 66,993. Okay, 66,993. Sufficient, they are required to maintain only 27,884, but against that, they are already having 66,993 in the form of liquid assets. So, no adjustment is required here means in our solution also no adjustment is to be shown because they already have more than this is the minimum required 18.75 percent they already have more than 18.75 percent of amount of deposits in the form of liquid assets so here you will mention just as a note that since liquid assets okay since liquid assets are already more than since liquid assets are already more than 18.75 percent no adjustment is required okay no adjustment is required now one more thing what if they were less Suppose this amount was only 6,699. Just for explanation, I am telling you, if it was only 
6,699. Then what we would have done? Then what we would have done would be given in the question. They'll tell you that if the statutory liquidity ratio is less than 18.75% existing, then what you do? You sell your fixed asset, you sell your premises, you sell your furniture, you borrow from other banks, it will be given to you. What is to be done to maintain this SLR of 18.75% if the amount is insufficient would be given in the question. But presently this statutory liquidity ratio will require no adjustment because already bank has liquid assets more than SLR required of 18.75%. Now adjustment to bills for collection 18,10,000 will come below the balance sheet as a footnote. Bills for collection market as BFC. Acceptances and endorsements are contingent liabilities marked as CL. Claims against the bank not acknowledged as debts are contingent liabilities CL. All these things will come below the balance sheet as a footnote. Okay, they'll come after the total of the balance sheet. Contingent liabilities as well as bills for collection. For contingent liabilities, we'll be making the schedule, but bills for collection will directly come in below the balance sheet final accounts format. Now depreciation charged on premises 1,10,000 and furniture 78,000. We don't have to give any two effects of this depreciation because only balance sheet is to be made. PL account is not asked. So what shall we do with this depreciation? First of all, this premises amount 15,570 is already after deducting this depreciation of 1,10,000. I repeat. 1,10,000 means if you cancel this three zeros, okay, in case if you cancel this three zeros, then 110, okay. So this amount 15570 already includes this amount of 110. What we will do first, we will add 110 in that, 15,570 plus 110 means we will show 15,618 inner column from which we will subtract 110. And then we will show 15,517 outer column. So just as a disclosure, we will show how much depreciation is there in the balance sheet. But 15,570 will only come in outer column. Okay, this amount is already after deducting depreciation. Exactly same way it is with furniture also. This furniture of 7,010 is already after deducting this amount of depreciation 78,000. So if you cancel 3 zero, 78. So 7010 plus 78. Inner column you show 7080. I repeat 7010 plus 78. Inner column you show 7088. From that you minus 78. And then in outer column you show 7010. So this is just to show what amount of depreciation is provided. We will be bring, bringing it in the inner column in the books of accounts. Otherwise, outer column, these two amounts are only going to appear. Okay. So, this workings, I hope everyone is clear with it. Otherwise, you can rewind the video and understand it once again. What do they exactly mean over here? Now, all of you make the format of balance sheet. So, balance sheet of tiny bank limited for the year ended 31390. Make one page format. First, we will write the items in the balance sheet as per that trick which I have given you. Then, we will make the schedules. And then we will do fill in the blanks in this balance sheet format. So pause the video and make this table and columns for one page. Do it fast everyone. Yes, I hope everyone has done the formats. So first we will make the format completely in detail. All of you must remember the shortcut trick for that. <clears throat> so first all of you give the heading capital and liabilities. Within that, what we had was first cash reserves deposited with CBI, Bank of CBI is the finest option. Cash C stands for capital, then reserves, reserves, then deposited deposits with Bank B borrowings. Of or other liabilities and provisions then after that we will have assets
then after assets first now cash reserves deposited with bank of cbi now c stands for cash balance and balance with rbi then cbi b stands for bank balance and money at call and short notice i stands for investments okay cbi is a a stands for advances f stands for fixed asset finance f stands for fixed assets option o stands for other assets then again total then after total we will have contingent two items a contingent liabilities and b bills for collection so this is a complete balance sheet format what we have to always make it in advance schedule numbers would be capital is 1 reserves is 2 deposits is 3 borrowings is four other liabilities and provisions is five cash balance and balance with rbi is six bank balance and money at and call and short notice is seven investments is eight advances is nine fixed assets is 10 other assets is 11 contingent liabilities is 12 so now we'll make these schedules in detail okay schedule number 1 that is capital now All of you see here in capital, what do we have? Share capital nineteen lakh eighty thousand shares of rupees ten inch nineteen thousand eight hundred rupees in thousands are there, so we can also mention that rupees are in thousands. Okay, here also we can mention that rupees are in thousands. Now capital. first we write authorized capital that is not given in the question so question mark and double underline double underline because even if amount was given it would not have been included in the total then after authorized capital we will have issued subscribed and paid up capital okay issued subscribed and paid up capital now in that we will write this 1 lakh 80000 equity shares of rupees 10 each that comes to in thousands it comes to 19800 and that itself will be the total of schedule 1 19800 then we will have schedule 2 reserves now in reserves all the things marked as r will be considered so we keep on putting take also share capital is recorded now very first we have statutory reserve which is marked as r 23100 take means we have to record it in inner column so first all of you write statutory reserves 23100 in inner column now in that what we have to do is we have to add 25% of current year's profits which will be transferred to statutory reserve you all can see current years profits we have highlighted in this yellow are 15000 15000 is 25% we discussed we have to transfer to statutory reserve so 15000 into 25% in bracket you can show that 15000 into 25% do it in calculator everyone 3750 it must be coming to yes so 3750 we will add in this means in outer column we will get 26850 okay 26850 so statutory reserves is done in reserves and surplus now next item marked as this r is this pnl account in which we have to add this remaining balance 75% of 15000 so first you all write pnl account 41200 in inner column okay profit and loss account 41200 in inner column from that in that we have to add 
current year's profits but after transferring to statutory reserve so current year's profits are 15000 from that 3750 is transferred to statutory reserve so 15000 minus 3750 remaining of 11250 we have to add in profit and loss balance so pnl balance will be 52450 okay so what is the total amount of reserves in surplus the bank is having 26850 plus 52450 that is 79300 now third item cash reserves deposited so deposits now deposits means what all items are marked as D okay, what all items are marked as D you all can see here so this two are taken in consideration fixed deposits are 51700 all of you write down fixed deposits 51700 then savings deposits and then current account deposits so these deposits will come over here how much are savings deposits? 45,000. So all of it on savings deposits, 45,000. And how much are current account deposits? 52,010. 52,010 are current account deposits. Put click on that. This is also recorded. So current account deposits, 52,010. Total of these three, we had already done in the workings also. 51,700 plus 45,000 plus 52,010 that comes to 148,710. So, deposits is done now. Cash reserves deposited with bank B stands for borrowings. So, what all items marked as B borrowings are there? Borrowings from other banks 2910. Only one item is there. Only one item of borrowing is there in the question. Borrowings from other banks 2910. That itself will become the total 2910. Then fifth, cash reserves deposited with bank of O stands for other liabilities and provisions. So all the items marked as OL will be taken into consideration. Only one item is there, bills payable and provisions 12,735. Okay, here also only one item is there. Bills payable and provisions. What amount it is? 12,735. And that itself will again become the total. 12,735. Then six, what we have is now cash reserves deposited with bank of CBI. C stands for cash balance and balance with RBI. So all the items mark as CRBI. In that we have this cash in hand 16015. Now cash in hand 16015 you can write it in outer column. But after that balance with RBI, you write in inner column because of that adjustment, first adjustment of CRR. So what is balance with RBI marked as CRBI? 3788. In this, we have to transfer the deficiency amount for that 4%. So 3788, you all write it in inner column. Now, in this, we are going to transfer because to maintain CRR of 4%, we will add transfer from other banks which we have shown in working note 1 okay this working note 1 we have shown that in cash balance with 
RBI, what we have to do is we have to add this 2161 so that this CRR of 4% 5949 is maintained. So 2161 is what we are going to add over here. Okay. 2161. Once we add 2161, then we will have this amount of 5949. What is required as per 4% CRR. Total will be 16015 plus 5949 21964. Then seventh note. Okay, CBI B stands for bank balance and money at call and short notice. So all the items marked as BM. Okay, all the items marked as BM will be shown over here. Two items will be included. One is this cash with other banks 15587. Here again, tick means you'll write it in inner column because from that we have to transfer the amount to RBI. So bank balance means cash with other banks. 15587, you have to show it in inner column. Now in that we have to add transfer to RBI. Okay, how much we have transferred to RBI from 15587 as per working note 1 this 2161. Okay, as we have marked over here that we have to minus from cash with other banks. So that amount is 2161 which we have to minus. So outer column what we will have is 15587 minus 2161. What is the balance going to remain with other banks? 13426. Okay, 13426 bank balance will remain with other banks. And then we have money at call. So how much is call money? Given money at call, you can see here 21012. Okay, no adjustment is there, it will come as it is. 21012 in the outer column. After that, the total will be 13426 plus 21012 that comes to 34438. Then, eighth item will be now CBI. I stands for investments. So, all the items marked as I will be taken into consideration over here. Okay, two items are there in investments we have done in the workings. One is this gold of 5523. So I'll write on gold 5523. Then second is that government securities. How much is government securities given over here? Immediately after gold, you can see we have marked as I. 11017. Okay, 11017. So total amount of investments would be 5523 plus 11017 that comes to 16540. Then ninth would be now is A. A stands for advances. Okay. Is a finance option. So A stands for advances. All the items marked as A will be taken into consideration. So first item marked as A is this cash credit of 81210, cash credit 81210, then after cash credit what other item is marked as A, term loan, this term loan of 86723, only two items are marked as A, term loan 86723. So total would come to 81210 plus 867233 that is 167933. Okay, 167933. <clears throat> now after that is a finest F stands for fixed assets. 
and that we have premises. Now here I told you that premises we have you have to put take on premises because there is an adjustment related to that even furniture which adjustment depreciation. So 15570 will not show in that will add 110 and will show 15680 in the inner column. First we will show premises of 15680 in the inner column. How do you get 15680? For your understanding you can write 15570 plus first we add back the depreciation of 110. Then from that we will subtract the depreciation of 110. So in outer column what we will get is 15570. So directly you cannot show 15570. Just for the information purpose first you people show that there is a depreciation of 110. And exactly same thing we will do with furniture. Furniture is 7010 but we will not directly show 7010 first we will show 7010 plus 78 rupees in thousands so 78,000 will become 78 okay 7010 in inner column in that we will add 78 sorry 7010 plus 78 7080 in inner column okay 7010 plus 78 7080 in inner column from that you will subtract depreciation that is 78 so in outer column what you will get is 7010 and then total of both the items 15570 plus 7010 total fix the sets 22580 now after fixed assets is a finest option. O stands for other assets. All the items marked as other assets will be taken into consideration OA. Okay, on the debit side you can see in trial balance there is no item marked as OA. All the items of trial balances have been taken into consideration. Okay, so there is no item marked as OA. You will write nil. Other assets are not there so you will write nil. Then after other assets, we will have 12th item that is contingent liabilities. Now contingent liabilities will come in adjustments. Okay. Contingent liabilities will come in adjustments. You all can see adjustment 3 and 4 are contingent liabilities. So acceptances and endorsements 14 lakh 12,000 if you remove the 3,000s. Then in thousands when we write, we write only 1412. So acceptances and endorsements 1412. And then what is the other contingent liability CL marked item in the adjustment? Adjustment number 4. Claims against the bank not acknowledged as debts. Again, if you cancel this 1550. Okay. Claims against the bank not acknowledged as debts 550. Claims against the bank not acknowledged as debts that is 550. So total will come to 1410 plus 550 1962. Okay, 1412 plus 550 1962. So all the schedules are done. Now we have to write in the balance sheet. You have to do fill in the blanks in the balance sheet. So let us take up with the items in the balance sheet. As per schedule number one, what is the amount of capital we got? 19,800. So in balance sheet, all of you write down. 19,800. Then as per schedule two, what reserves did we get? 79,300. Okay, 79,300. So in balance sheet, all of it are down. Reserves 79,300. Then deposits as per schedule 3, what do we have? 148,710. So all of it are down in balance sheet. 148,710. Then borrowings as per schedule 4, what we have is 2910. Borrowings are 2910. So all of it are down in balance sheet. Borrowings 2910. Then after that, other liabilities and provisions, what we have is 1, 2, 7, 3, 5, fifth schedule. So fifth schedule, 1, 2, 7, 3, 5. 
one, two, seven, three, five. The total of liabilities can be done now. Do it, everyone. Nineteen eight hundred plus seventy-nine thousand three hundred plus one four eight seven one zero plus two nine one zero plus one two seven three five. So that comes to two six three four double five. Two six three four double five. Now cash balance and balance with RBI as per Schedule Six. See the Schedule Six cash balance and balance with RBI is two one nine six four. Or if it is around two one nine six four, then seventh bank balance and money at call and short notice as per Schedule Seven it is three four four three eight. So write down in Schedule Seven three four four three eight. Then investments as per schedule eight is one six five four zero. So if you write down investments one six five four zero, then advances as per schedule nine is one six seven nine three three. So if you write down advances one six seven nine three three. Then after advances, fixed assets. Okay, advances are done now. Fixed assets as per Schedule Ten are two two five eight zero. So as per Schedule Ten, two two five eight zero. And other assets as per Schedule Eleven, nil. Other assets as per Schedule Eleven are nil. They are not there. So I'll write down other assets nil. Now again, the total of balance sheet is to be done. Asset side is to be done. So total of asset side. Do it, everyone. Two one nine six four plus three double four three eight plus one six five four zero plus one six seven nine three three plus two two five eight zero. You all can see it comes to two six three four five five. Two six three four five five. See, does it get tallied or not? Liability also two six three four five five. Asset also two six three four five five. Now contingent liabilities <coughs> schedule twelve we have done. They are one nine six two. As per schedule twelve, contingent liabilities are how much? One nine six two. And bills for collection you directly get from adjustments. You all can see this adjustment to bills for collection is eighteen lakh ten thousand. If you cancel three zeros, then only one eight one zero. Bills for collections will write one eight one zero. Just for the disclosure, we have to write it as a footnote. Otherwise, they are not to be included in the total of balance sheet. So this is how we have to solve the question on balance sheet. Now, one more similar question I discussed that is question number fourteen. Or if you take out the question fourteen of your study material, I'll discuss the markings with you. So I suggest you all pause the video. And in question fourteen, as I have done these markings over here. You all first do the entire markings on your own. Then you play the video and verify your markings are correct or not. And then you try entire solution on your own and verify it from. You will learn out whether your solution is right or not. So take out question fourteen, pause the video, and do the markings on your own first. All of you start doing the markings. Yes, I hope all of you would have done the markings of question fourteen. Now check your markings, everyone. Be attentive. Then you try the solution on your own. From the following ledger balances and additional information, prepare balance sheet of Astha Bank Limited as at 31st March 2015. Money at call and short notice BM Bank balance and money at call and short notice balance with other banks BM bel, uh, Bank balance and money at call and short notice investments in government securities I investments bills discounted and purchased advances A furniture and fixtures fixed assets F And see, it is given after depreciation. So what we did in the previous question, same thing you have to do. First, add back the amount of depreciation, and then you show depreciation in the inner column. Stock of stamps and stationery, other assets. So last question, what we have done, <clears throat> other assets was not there. Here you have other assets also. Interest accrued on investments, other assets. Non-banking assets, other assets. Cash in hand, CRBI, cash balance and balance with RBI. Even 
cash with RBI, CRBI, cash balance and balance with RBI. Premises, fixed assets, F, again same thing. After depreciation, so you will show 128 plus depreciation and then subtract depreciation. Now here you make the correction, cancel 15. 15 is nothing. Cancel that amount of 15 rupees everyone. Okay, make the correction, cancel 15 rupees. Cash, credit, overdrafts and loan advances. Gold will come in investments. I. Share capital authorized and issued. Issued is given. So 75,000 shares of 100 each that will come in capital C. Savings bank deposits, deposit D. Demand deposits, deposit D. Bills payable, other liabilities and provisions OL. Statutory reserve, reserves and surplus are input. Tick on that, you show it in inner column because current year's profits, 25% is to be transferred to statutory reserve. Term deposits, deposits D. Borrowings from other banks B. Unclaimed dividend, other liabilities and provision OL. Rebate on bills discounted, other liabilities and provisions OL. Inter office adjustment, it is given in credit side of trial balance. So I made you write it in the notes when we discuss the format schedules in detail. That if inter office adjustment is credit balance, other liabilities, debit balance, then other assets. This is in credit balance, so other liabilities. Profit of the year ended on 31 3 15. See, it is given before transfer to statutory reserve. So this will also come in reserves and surplus R, but put tick on that. From this 1500, you will transfer 25% to statutory reserve that is this 2250. So 1500 is 25%, you'll minus from 1500 and plus in 2250 as we did in the previous question. And then balance amount 1500 after subtracting 25% 375, remaining will come in the outer column. PNL accounts opening balance like previous question is not given. Now acceptances and endorsements on behalf of customers amounted to 45 lakhs but cancelling three zeros you will record only 4500 in contingent liabilities. Below the balance sheet as a footnote it will come. Claims against a bank not acknowledged as debts. Again cancelling the three zeros you will write only 450 in contingent liabilities. Bills for collection BFC cancelling the three zeros you will write only 2000 rupees. Directly in balance sheet you will write it as footnote. So these three things will come below the balance sheet as a footnote after the totals of balance sheet. Transfer 25% of current year's profit to statutory reserve. Even if not given, you would have done that. So this is a hidden adjustment whether given or not. 1500 is 25% you'll minus from 1500 and add in 2250. 2250 plus this 25% will come in outer column. 1500 minus this 25% will come in outer column. Make necessary transfer from cash with other banks to maintain cash reserve ratio required at 4% of demand and time liabilities and statutory liquidity ratio to be maintained at 23% of demand and time liabilities. Now 23% this is which year's exam 2014. At that time the SLR required was 23% but now I told you CRR required is also 3% in fact SLR also 18.75%. So you people try with 18.75% only. Okay. In your exams, you'll be given with 18.75% only now after 2014. So this year's exams will be given 18.75% only. Here 4%, 3%, anything can be given. Okay. So you all try this entire question on your own completely and solution of the same. You can find it in the You Will Learn app and you can verify whether you did correct or not. That will be all for this lecture. Next question, next lecture when we take up now will be a mixed question. Complete final accounts will have to do. We'll make PL statement also and balance sheet also. So that'll be all for this lecture. Bye everyone. Take care. See you in the next lecture.